Okay, so Philip already said it's a big switch in topic. We're going away from the competitions and how to motivate people to contribute to how can we as a community um, improve the Wikipedia so that they become a better place. And not just we as a community, that was also the way we were speaking before, but I'm here as a WMF staff member, so it's about what can the foundation do to help the communities be better places, safer spaces, um, and there are a couple of teams at the moment working, at the one hand on technical things, that's the tools part of this title of my presentation, tools and policies for more constructive Wikipedias, the other part is um, what can we do to help communities develop better policies. You know that every Wikipedia makes its own rules based on the very basic things like the neutral point of view, um, the, all the rules about being friendly to each other, not attacking another user, um, contributing facts. Um, but every Wikipedia has its own processes and its own rules how to go about it. Still, um, some Wikipedias are quite happy with what they have. Other Wikipedias feel that in their community um, things are not working at some places. Often people are a bit disgruntled, they are grumpy, they're not always accepting the way administrators do things they do. When pages are protected, when users are blocked, it's not accepted always. So there's a good way to look at that and say, can we change those processes? Can we change those rules? And that's what those, the, what I'm going to talk about. What are the technical things that could be improved? So this is going sm smoother. And what are the policies that could be changed? Um, so our goal is really not to have something um, that every Wikipedia has to use, every community has to take, but it's really to empower the communities, to give them the tools they need that help the communities to grow, to give them models, best um, practice experiences from other Wikipedias, what works, what helps to make a good working atmosphere so that people like to contribute, that there is no harassment. Um, this is really the goal of us, and if I say us, our goal, I mean at the one hand the support and safety team that I'm part of, but also the technical teams that work on the tools, that's especially the anti-harassment tools team. So what is, what I'm going to do in this talk, I'm going to give you basically what the state of the research, what are we doing, where are we at the moment, and then I'm going to talk with you about what you can do again to get involved, because we do want your input. Um, the state of the research and development of the technical features of the tools. Um, one thing has been activated, I think, on all Wikipedias recently, that's the possibility to mute the echo function. Um, it's not to mute it totally, so you will not get notifications from anyone, but to individually have some users that cannot ping you anymore. Um, this can be quite enervating if you get a lot of pings from somebody you do not really want to have contact for, with. It can be something quite innocent, like there's a big fan who every edit you make says, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's actually quite nice. This person is not doing anything wrong, but if you are waiting for an important different ping, um, and you're always looking, oh, is it there? Oh no, it's again a thank you from that person. It might be a good idea to mute this person for some time. Um, and the other person doesn't need to know that you do not follow all his or her thank yous. But it could also be a way of trying to get a user back into a difficult discussion where if I'm disagreeing with somebody, 
And I'm trying to get out of this discussion. I'm trying to let this thing be quiet, not get mad again and try to quickly write an answer that I am the person that is right and the other one is the person that is not exactly having the perfect sources. And I've made the step to withdraw and say, okay, I won't answer anymore today. And then this person pings me and wants me to come back to the discussion. It's also a very good idea to use this feature and mute the ping from this user. So my decision, my initial decision, to not get emotionally involved that much anymore is much easier to keep if I don't get the little red ping. A similar thing is with the email mute. This is not live now, but they are working on it, the technical team, the anti-harassment tools team. It will be the possibility not to decide. It's always the decision of the single user. I can, if this feature is live, decide not to receive wiki mails from a certain user. Of course, this only works for wiki mails. If you have ever con answered a mail from this user and he does have your email. email address, he can use that, he won't go through wiki mail. And you have to do the same thing with your mail account filter system. So this is not a very big thing, but usually your spam filters won't filter out people you don't know that send wiki mails. So if there is somebody where you are in a heavy discussion and you do not want to get personal mails from this person, or if a person already has sent some mails that are not so comfortable, you can also block that even before it reaches your spam account. Abuse filters are not often thought of when you talk about tools but they are actually very important tools. Um, there are a lot of abuse filters running generally, I think, to prevent some kind of edits from sometimes from banned users, sometimes also um, with links from spam blacklisted um, content as to keep either certain people or certain content away. Uh, they don't work perfectly. There are often false positives, so people that try to make a good faith edit that should actually perhaps be kept, um, they are prevented from doing this edit by an abuse filter. And on the other hand, a lot of edits get through that are not really meant to be on the Wikipedias. So the teams are also looking into how to improve those abuse filters. Another thing they are thinking about is editing restrictions. Up to now, administrators only have really one tool. And also, again, this is often not thought about as a tool, but it's the tool of blocking a person. There's a lot of social things you can do. You can admonish, you can warn, you can give a friendly hint, all those things. Uh, but the only tool the administrator really has is the blocking tool or the page protection, of course. So there's a thought that there could be perhaps tools that are a bit more specific. That if, for example, one person, if he's editing in the political articles, is having big problems, starting fights, harassing others, but is contributing to something different like sports or biology without any problems, it would be wonderful to be able to tell this person, keep editing sports, biology, but please keep away from the politics. Sometimes this is done by ARPCOMs or by administrators, that they just give this as a rule that is spoken, but it's very hard, very difficult to enforce that rule. So if there was a tool that just said you can't edit anything under the category XYZ, um, that would be one kind of edit in restriction. Another problem sometimes, 
that is talked about that people are responding too fast, that escalations are happening on talk pages because, you know, you haven't even really read what the other person has written. You're getting all excited and all mad and you want to get your answer in and it gets more and more to the point of escalation. So if there is some kind of throttle and you can't put, I don't know, more than two answers, five answers within a certain time limit on a talk page, that could also be a helpful tool. Here really nothing, I'm, the numbers I'm giving, that's just something I'm making up now on the spot. This is exactly where input is needed. What would be useful? And would it be on talk pages? Or what other kind of things would be useful? That's all not decided. This is really, really just an idea that such things in itself could be helpful. <coughs> and there is community input really needed. Another, I think, tool that would, would be very helpful, often there is uh, claims of wiki hounding, wiki stalking. People will say, this person has made problems for me since the last six months, since 2014. We've had these problems before in 2007 and now it's starting again. And for an administrator who has to look those things up through the contribution history, that's very difficult. That's a lot of work. There's a lot of edits in between that are very innocent, have nothing to do with this conflict. And still, to make a good decision, it is important to look up, has this been going on indeed for that long time? So there is an idea to develop a tool that would show the user interaction history. It would only show those edits where both users were editing the same page in a certain time frame. Um, again, this is something that is up to now only an idea. There hasn't been any development going on, but it's something that came up from previous discussions with community members and that the anti-harassment tools team is thinking of developing and again is also waiting for feedback if this is something that you all also think is a good idea. Not the anti-harassment tools team, but another technical team in the foundation at the moment is looking at socket puppet detection. They have a very interesting um, model from another research that was done on a different web page where an, um, somebody developed an artificial intelligence that was really good at detecting socket puppets. If they, this artificial intelligence um, said that would be a socket puppet, thought it would be a socket puppet based on behavior, not on the technical details, but on what those two accounts were posting. When it was checked, often it was found out that indeed it was the same uh, technical things so that it was a high probability that it is a socket puppet. So they are looking at the possibility to take this um, thing also on Wikipedia. It's a lot different. The way edits are made are a lot different than on other platforms. We all know this. So that's not sure if this will work. But if, I don't know, are there any check users here in the room? Uh, they are very, very interested in input from check users. Uh, because you know how socket puppets are detected at the moment in the Wikipedias and they want to work together and find out if they can make it easier though, so you don't have to do as many check users because if you have a high prediction that's not the case and if it's very reliable before you use the tools you don't have to invade <coughs> the privacy. Every check user is a privacy invasion of course. Um, so that's the goal, the aim of this thing. There are some other things going on, but they are more or less minor, so I do not want to talk about them now. 
the other side, beside the tools, I said there's something that's the non-technical side where we talk about policies, policy growth. Some Wikipedias want to have more developed rules. Some of the smaller that are growing, with a growing community, there is also a need to have more differentiated rules because new people will come in. They won't understand what everybody already understands. You have to explain it. That's usually a normal process that you set up rules there. But also how to enforce those rules. That's also a very important part because you can have wonderful rules. If you don't have a way to enforce them, what's the use? So a lot of those rules that are most important are about good behavior, about conflict solving without a lot of con aggression, constructive conflict solving. Um, and that's also again where the harassment part comes in, that is also in the name of the team, anti-harassment. And that's also a big issue now for the support and safety team to do something against harassment. Our colleague Joe Sutherland, with others together, um, developed training modules that are really good. I will explain them a bit more after that. That is one big thing that has been done. Something that's going on is a research on the English administrators' notice boards on incidents. That's the A and I, the short form. It means administrators notice boards incidents. That's not edit warring the English system for those who don't who are not familiar I wasn't familiar with it. Um, who are not familiar with it. They have very differentiated notice boards for administrators, for page protection. And incidents is really everything that is between editors that doesn't fit in the other categories. This is the biggest notice board. That is why the research is done there, because there is a lot of data. Data. If you want to do any research that makes sense, you have to have enough data to see if it's just something that is there um, just this year, just for those few people, or if it's something that is really um, kind of the rule. So this is why they went there and not to any other Wikipedia. Um, they are doing a big quantitative research, but they are also doing a smaller <coughs> qualitative research where people going there are asked how they feel about this. If they think the way reporting is done there is working well, if the results are those that are um, wanted or if there is anything missing. The third thing that is done is I think um, we should have much more of that. We have a small collaboration going on with Harvard and Harvard at the moment has one group of students for one term looking into the conflict solving methods of Wikipedia. They're doing this only on a small portion of Wikipedia on Meta because it's, you know, students and it's just for one term. If they wanted to understand the whole Wikipedia conflict solving from offline communications, conflicts between the affiliates, the foundation, conflicts between experienced editors, new editors, conflicts on content, conflicts on I don't know what, I think those students would be a bit overwhelmed. We wouldn't get any results. The hope is that once this is started, there will be more research done on conflict solving in the Wikipedia. And I'm mentioning this. I don't have great hopes of anything coming out of that that will be useful to you. But my hope is that more research in this kind of line done by different universities in different countries also will help us understand our communities better and how they work and will us help make them a better and safer place, will help us making it easier to work together towards the goal of 
you know, creating more reliable, wonderful content. So I think this is an idea I really want to spread around a bit, that working together with the universities, the way we are used to it is getting them as partners to produce content. But I think it's also very good to have them examine us because I do think that the Wikipedia, Wikimedia communities are something really wonderful and something that is a lot different from other communities that they have until then looked at. I think we are really the avant-garde of internet communities and so it's good if somebody looks at that with a scientific view. The support and training, support and safety training modules, they are not on the Wikipedia, that's a bit awkward, but the Wikimedia software is not interactive enough to support them, so they are on the outreach dashboard. I put that on the slide for that reason, but you can find it if you go in Meta and you uh, go to uh, look for the support and safety training modules. Is there anybody in the room who has taken them? Wonderful. There is one person. <laughs> because you are really, really the group of people that should be taking them. You are the ones that are taking responsibility for communities. You are either from the chapters or you are functionaries or you are very involved, that's involved in your user group, your chapter, your community, that's why you are here. And for those people, those modules are supposed to be. There's one on keeping events safe. Calliope will talk about this issue general on how to keep events safe a bit more on Monday, I think. And the others are about dealing with online harassment. One is giving just the fundamentals. One is talking about other forms of harassment that are not online but often connected. One is giving actually communication best practices, how to respond, what to do in the different roles that you can have. One is about how to handle reports. What do you do if as an administrator, a steward, a chapter person, somebody comes up and says, I've been harassed. And the last one, it sounds a bit stupid, it's about closing cases. That seems so easy first, but what is the point when you really know this is, has been handled well? I can put that aside. This is something I won't need to look in again next week. So that's not as easy as it sounds, and it's really good to also take this module, of course, what interest is each one of you most start with that? You don't have to take them all. But I really want to um, encourage you to look at them. This was already the first part of how can you get involved, or I put this kind of in between. Um, this is, of course, the easiest way to get involved in all this is to take the training modules. Until now, they have been translated, Calliope, do you know it, I think, to five languages? I think five full languages, and we're working on more. And, as she said, we are working on more. I'm very much inviting you to work on your own language to translate them. Um, again, Joe Sutherland, my colleague, will be happy to help you to choose where to start, to break it down into little chunks, because translating them all is just not anything one person would usually do. Um, it would have to be a very dedicated person. <laughs> it has been done. Most it has been done, I know. Most. But I think it would be wonderful to have them in more languages, and I don't know how many languages are sitting in this room, but there are several sitting here that I'm sure of. So it would be wonderful if you could also tell others in your community, please help us translating, spread the word that those are important modules, training modules, and it would be what we are hoping for your help. The other one is take part in the discussions on community health. All what I told you, most of it, is part of the community health initiative. So there's the meta page that I also put on the slide, where you can just take part in the discussion. 
part of this meta page is saying what's new, what's going on, and you find links to the newest developments. You can take part of the discussions on the subpages then there. We really need us, need you, to give us your opinion on what is already done. Was that done well or not? What could have been done better? Point us to problems that we haven't looked at yet, where tools are needed, where new policies are needed. But also show us your best practices. Show us which solutions you have found on your weeklies. Because the foundation just knows about certain things, but they don't know everything about every wiki. And again and again, I learn from somebody who says, oh, we're doing this that way, and it works really well, and I'm surprised. So that's really what we invite you to bring. But also, of course, ask us interesting questions. Because only if we are in a discussion with interesting questions, that's how we learn. That's how I learn. And I hope we will all together find a way. Because only together can we make the Wikipedias better places, even better places. I think they are wonderful places already. Where it's wonderful to work, where we are happy to contribute, and where we can be very convincing, inviting others to contribute, because we can tell them it's good places. So, are there any questions? Do these policies take precedence over the local policies uh, on, um, on Wikipedia's? No. If anything is developed, it's, as I said, it would be an example of best practice, and you can decide on your Wikipedia if you want to adopt that or not. It's not supposed to be something that the WMF says you have to do, the foundation says this is now for every Wikipedia because this would not work. Because all the Wikipedias already have their own structures, their own policies, and also the conditions are very diff different. I think that what we heard about the Bashkortostan Wikipedia, um, a lot of things they did would not work on, like the German Wikipedia, because of the size of the community, because of the background, the social background of the communities, so that wouldn't make sense to develop something that everybody has to adopt. Maybe a year ago when the first, first time this anti-harassment uh, motivation came up there was a discussion about it that there will be an international group or mailing list where we can discuss this topic, but uh, but I didn't hear anything about it since then. Do you know if there is something about it? There is, on the community health page on Meta, um, there is a newsletter you can sign up to, and a mailing list I think also you can sign up to. So. You really have to go to that meta page. Yeah, it was there already. And there is one um, paragraph where it says the latest development. I don't know. I'm not sure now exactly about the title. But there is all the ways where you can stay informed and get invited to join into the discussion. I'm curious about uh, the question yesterday from Piotr Leszczynski from Polish Wikipedia. And he said if he is writing with his, with his normal, normal account, nobody is checking his uh, edits. But he is, if he is writing with new account because he is testing uh, their Wikipedia, he is blocked immediately. Is there some automatic policy that we can attend, apply in this case, for example? Because it's problem also in other Wikipedias. You mean to block him with a pistol? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> no, because they don't yeah. know that it's Peter and they block him because of his... But if they know that it's Peter, nobody's checking him. Yes. 
um, I have heard this discussion a lot of times. I didn't hear anything about tools that the anti-harassment tools team is thinking about developing. In the policies part, we are very much talking about that, what to do about the acceptance of new users and what could be done to improve that. Um, in the tools part, I don't think it's been talked about. I just remember now that in the German Wikipedia, we had a big discussion if there should be a markup to show edits of new users um, and if that would be contributing to the problem because people would look at them more critically or if that would help because people would realize it's somebody who is new and who should just be explained the things they did wrong. But I'm, that was from my volunteer time that I remember that. And it was in the German Wikipedia, not the... But I can bring that into the discussion. Thank you for that. Thanks. Because if there isn't, um, well, thank you, Crystal, for the presentation. Thank you.